from stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. A very good evening to you. I'm Lakshita Dhrasingha. We start off tonight by taking a quick look at the headlines. Azad Zali has been taken into custody. Cabinet approval granted to convert paddy stocks into rice purchased by paddy marketing board and distribute. Steps taken to telecast Guru Gedera program jointly with Channel I and Netra Channel. An insurance coverage for stage drama artists under the expense of the government. Ministry of Foreign Relations indicates a decision has yet to be reached on the ban of burqa and niqab. For those and other stories in detail. Former Governor of Western Province, Azad Sali, has been taken into custody by Criminal Investigation Department this evening. He was arrested in Kolopiti area. Police media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan said that he was taken into custody under the provisions of the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Police media spokesman DIG Ajit Rohan said that former Governor Azad Sali will be detained and investigated under the provisions of the Prevention of Terrorism Act on Easter Sunday attacks and relevant incidents. He said that further investigations are being carried out by the Criminal Investigation Department. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says Preksha insurance coverage will be provided for the artists in the field of stage drama under the sponsorship of the government for the first time in the history of the country. The Prime Minister made these remarks while taking part in the ceremony to present Preksha accident and medical insurance coverage for artists in the field of stage drama. The ceremony was held at the Temple Trees today. The event was jointly organized by the State Ministry of Promotion of National Heritage, Performing Arts and Rural Artists and Tower Hall Foundation. The granting of the Preksha accident and medical insurance coverage will be carried out through Janashakti Insurance Company. Accordingly, a beneficiary of the insurance coverage will receive a sum of 200,000 rupees at their death, 600,000 rupees at their death caused by an accident, 400,000 rupees for lifelong disabilities, 300,000 rupees as coverage for chronic diseases, an annual allowance of 150,000 rupees benefit for cashless hospitalizations, and an annual allowance of 15,000 rupees will be granted for OPD treatments. The Cabinet of Ministers has reached a decision to convert paddy stocks purchased by Paddy Marketing Board into rice and expedite the distribution process through Satasa. The relevant decision has been reached following shortage of adequate quantities of rice in the existing market under controlled price rates. Addressing the media briefing held to announce the Cabinet decisions today, Co-Cabinet Spokesman Minister Ramesh Patrana said that another decision has been reached to consider on alternative measures to be taken in future based on the success of this program. Co-Cabinet Spokesman Minister Ramesh Patirana said that the intention of the government is to provide rice for the consumers at concessionary price rates. Accordingly, he said that the paddy marketing board entered into the paddy market and initiated the process to purchase paddy stocks at fair price rates from the cultivators without incurring any losses to them. The, he added that the price rate of the rice had an impression of rising in the recent past amidst the price rates of paddy. He said that the government is expecting a considerable amount of harvest during this season as well. The minister said that the market has experienced a shortage of rice amidst high levels of paddy harvests. Accordingly, he said that suspicions have risen over an alleged involvement of a third-party entity in harboring paddy quantities without releasing it to the market. He said that during the festive season, the government will convert paddy stocks purchased by Paddy Marketing Board into rice and expedite the distribution process through Satasa at certified price rate. The Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval to continuously telecast the educational program Guru Gedara, designed by National Institute of Education in conjunction with Channel I and Netra Channel of Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation. Accordingly, educational activities for grade 3 to 13 are expected to telecast in Sinhala and Tamil mediums through the channels. 
the government has decided to pass the Tripitaka Conservation Act. Accordingly, the Cabinet of Ministers has granted approval for the proposal presented to instruct the legal draftsmen to prepare the draft bill in this regard. The approval of the Cabinet of Ministers has been granted for the program to initiate home shop comprised of both a house and shop in one household in every garment division targeting young women entrepreneurs selected from some of the families. He prop the proposed houses and the shops will be constructed adjoining the roads proposed to be constructed under 100,000 kilometers of road development project while proposed home shops to be constructed in the sizes of 200, 300 and 500 square feet. Cabinet spokesman Minister Kehelia Rabukwala made remarks over the proposed investment to West East Terminal. The breakdown, uh, that is the offer that they have made, the breakdown will be uh, finalised after discussions. But I am sure that there are so many other parties that are interested. As a government of Sri Lanka, we are also interested to see whether the local com local companies are also interested in this en entire thing. So this is quite open. I mean, uh, Adani has expressed their views, and then we respect that. But then, uh, as far as we are concerned, we are looking for other options while uh, accepting the Adani's uh, 51 percent. So that's at the 51. So that's 49, and then 49 would be shared with the government uh, institutions uh, that are related to ports and ports management and also the private sector who is interested who has some experience in this field will be considered. Now Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa says that all should rally together as a nation in taking forth the Made in Sri Lanka brand as the most excellent brand in the world. He made this remark while addressing a ceremony held in Colombo yesterday. The ceremony to launch the total operational process for the assembling of vehicle productions and manufacturing of vehicle parts was held yesterday with the participation of the Prime Minister. <coughs> Minister Vimal Viravansa presented the document consisting of the total operational process to the Prime Minister. The operational process can be accessed via the official website of the Ministry of Industries. <coughs> Addressing the gathering, Minister Vimal Viravansa said that the job opportunities will be created for the young graduates of engineering and technological subjects within the country through the expansion of the industries. Minister Garmini Lokuge, State Minister Dilum Amunugama and Secretary to the Ministry of Industries Anusha Palpita were present at the occasion. <coughs> Minister of Foreign Relations says that the government is yet to reach a decision to ban the wearing of the burqa and niqab in Sri Lanka. Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Jayanath Kolambage said that it is merely a proposal which is under discussion. The proposal has been based on the precautionary measures that are needed on national security grounds following the investigations on the Presidential Commission of Inquiry on Easter Sunday attack. The statement issued by the Foreign Ministry further indicated that the government will initiate a broad dialogue with all parties concerned and sufficient time will be taken for necessary consultations to be held and for consensus to be reached. Recent media reports have highlighted statements made with regard to a proposal to ban the wearing of the burqa and niqab in the country. Remarks were also shared in this regard at the Cabinet briefing today. No, I don't think there's any connection with the Geneva sessions. With regard to this, this is uh, an internal security matter and it is not only uh, internal, externally also uh, there are enough and more countries who are considering this as a security threat. So that is the basis on which we have uh, discussing this and we will be moving forward towards that on the, on the basis of national security, nothing else. Director of the Institute of Allergy and Immunology and Cell Biology of University of Sri Jayawardenepura, Dr. Chandima Jivandra says that antibodies have been successfully developed in those who received the first dose of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in the country. He said that this has been proven from the tests conducted on the blood samples obtained from 2,000 persons who had been administered with the first dose of the vaccine following a period of one month. 
Dr. Chandima Jivandra said that a study is underway to test the efficacy of the vaccine. He said that during the study, they have observed that the antibodies are being developed in a successful rate on those who have administered with the vaccine. He said that this success rate indicates that the vaccine is compatible with the Sri Lankans. A total of 784,500 persons have been vaccinated under the COVID-19 immunization program. Accordingly, a total of 11,489 persons received the vaccine yesterday. And that's all the stories for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow at the very same time. Good night. Good night.